If you were to pick one phrase that belongs to gaming the most, I don't think you could find one better than level up. For a term that video game RPGs borrowed from their tabletop counterparts, the idea of leveling up has quickly found a home in so many other genres. Action, puzzle, open world, first person shooters, the occasional platformer. Lots of genres have adapted leveling systems in one form or another, but for an idea so broadly applicable, Leveling up is a weird construct. A discreet, noticeable, sudden improvement in your character's ability isn't a very realistic way to think about personal progress. And yet, it's such a useful abstraction. It's a great way to streamline the concept of growth, and it fits perfectly in so many video games. It's a fantastic tool, but like any other tool, it can be used for good, and it can be dangerous in the wrong hands. Or just not be as effective as it could be. Let's talk about leveling systems, how to design effective ones, and how different games spin them to keep players hooked and make games fun and fresh. But first, get ready to level yourself up, for real, with today's sponsor, Skillshare. No joke, Skillshare is really good. I'm taking a class called the Productivity Masterclass, principles and tools to boost your productivity. Ali Abdal guides you through years of proven research about the principles, strategies, and tools that actually work to help you be more productive, regardless of what you want to do. I've been using this class to think about how I create these videos, and it's been useful info. It's helped me procrastinate a little less and save time, and I think it's totally worth it. Skillshare has thousands of other inspiring classes on topics like UI and UX design, animation, creative writing, illustration, practically anything you're into, Skillshare can help you explore it deeper and learn amazing things. And today, you can get a free trial. For a limited time, use the link in the description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Try it out. Skillshare. I do it. You can too. I like it. So what is it about leveling systems that makes them so useful and popular? It's all about progression. Progression sustains the life of games and keeps them interesting. But progression is such a broad concept. There are tons of different ways it can show itself. The way the narrative unfolds in a game like Undertale is a kind of progression. So is going place to place through new areas in Hollow Knight. Fighting through a ramping difficulty curve in a game like Geometry Wars is yet another one. All progression is a way to structure a game and give players a reason to keep moving forward. See the next story beat. See what's around the next corner. See if you can meet the next challenge. Without it, games can quickly get static and dull. But since progression is such a broad and abstract concept, you can do an infinite number of things to scratch that progressive itch. Leveling systems are just a tested and reliable way to do it. To understand how leveling systems provide progression, I like to think about two big categories, intrinsic and extrinsic progression. Intrinsic progression involves a player's self-driven improvements. Games that rely on it can be a slow burn. Chess is a good example. Every game of chess starts with the same board, but each new match doesn't start from the same place. Players bring with them their accumulated experience, a deeper knowledge of the rules to better take advantage of opportunities, a better recognition of strategic patterns that they've run into before, an ability to predict and counter the moves your opponents might make. Intrinsic progression develops from your experience, built over time. Chess doesn't give you an explicit bonus for how many games of chess you've played. There's no XP bar for this pawn. Intrinsic progression develops out of your personal experience. Many of the world's most timeless and enduring games let players build on their experience forever, bit by bit, and draw people back to them with the promise of getting a little better all the time. In video games, Rocket League, Starcraft, and a lot of fighting games rely on this kind of progression. There's always something new to learn, or a skill to sharpen, provided just by the game's rules and the dynamics of the head-to-head -head matches between players. Intrinsic progression is a deep well to draw from, and games that rely on it can stick with players for their entire lives. But intrinsic progression has some inherent issues, too. Not every game needs to be a lifelong hobby or even wants to be. Some are meant to be consumed in 50 hours, not 50 years. That's a stylistic choice, but there can also be a structural problem with intrinsic progression. Left to their own devices, games that rely on building up a lot of skill over time can be brutal on beginners. Fighting games especially run into this snag a lot. 
the depth of fighting games comes from a profound familiarity with the game's mechanics. Matchups, frame data, instant reactions, mix-ups, game-specific techniques like wave dashing, there are lots of things to know if you want to do well. For a veteran player, they might become second nature. Some skills might even partially transfer from another fighting game if they've already had experience over there. For beginners though, there's a dizzying amount of things to learn to even start improving. Even if the beginner is spending time to improve, it might be a while before that improvement gains tangible results. If the online matchmaking is still pitting you against better players, or if your game destroyed over and over by a veteran playing in a local scene, it's hard to feel like you're improving. If the result is always a loss, the experience can feel static for a long time. The game's novelty might wear off quickly, and without any visible progression leading a new player up the skill ramp, like a trail of breadcrumbs, new players can bounce off a game. What would help is a way to guarantee that feeling of progression for everyone, and that's what extrinsic progression is great at. Extrinsic progression covers the structures that encourage a player to keep playing not because they just want to, but because the goal was put there. Extrinsic progression is easier to create too. You don't have to come up with a great reason for a player to want to get to the end. Just set a goal in front of people, and many will want to complete it just because it's there. It's not as deep, but it's much easier to implement and works well enough. Cosmetic items are effective extrinsic progression tools. Think about how often you kept playing a game for the chance to get a cosmetic item you wanted. But this episode is about another fantastic external progression tool, level up systems. They're great at guaranteeing that a player will get that feeling of progress. No matter your skill level or how well you grasp the game mechanics, if you put your time in, you'll get better. Noticeably better. Sure, some people might go down the path faster or slower, but you'll all eventually get to the end. It can't really fall into the problem where the game feels static for too long. Now there are a zillion different ways to implement a level up system, but let's start with a real basic one. Pokemon. It's a real plain vanilla leveling system. Fight a wild Pokemon or a trainer, gain experience, level up, get a little stronger. Rinse and repeat. To spice things up, every few levels, an event suddenly happens. Your Pokemon will gain a new move or ability, or once in a while, it will evolve into something a little cooler. Usually. Under the hood, there are mechanics that power players can factor in, like natures, IVs, EVs, and special evolutions, but none of that is necessary for casual play. The game's campaign is built to smoothly guide you towards the end, even if you only interact with the basic leveling system. Kids playing the game don't have to know anything special to see benefits from their time spent, and can totally ignore the more advanced systems underneath. It's not the most exciting system though, it's the grind. This kind of EXP threshold based system is prone to feeling like a treadmill if it's not carefully dotted with enough interesting new things along the way, like the new moves or evolutions in Pokemon. Time progress to a concrete number of EXP gained makes the pace of progress pretty set in stone, and players who have played a few of these sorts of progression systems might recognize the treadmill for what it is early. That can defeat the feeling of accomplishment that the level up system is trying to add to the game. That stripped down version of the treadmill shows up in Super Paper Mario. The game is a mashup of Mario platforming and RPG mechanics, and the mashup feels a little awkward. There's a disconnect in the game's story progression and its mechanical progression. The RPG half levels you up based on your score. As you defeat enemies, you'll earn points like in the original Super Mario Bros. You'll level up once you hit a threshold and get preset bonuses that alternate between more attack power or more HP. The story is completely divorced from this system, and you can just blaze through it as fast as you want. There aren't the same gates blocking off your story progress until you get mechanically strong enough, like there are with the gym leaders in Pokemon. There's not even any fun mystery around the corner or agency in determining a character build when you level up. The new moves are all unlocked by getting further in the story. Without connecting it to the story, Super Paper Mario's progression system feels like it's there for its own sake which makes the treadmill-like qualities of it stand out even more. For a different spin on traditional level up systems, try Final Fantasy IX. There are different experience systems all over the place, and they're all leveling up simultaneously. There's one traditional one that handles your basic stats, but there are more XP bars attached to equipment. By changing equipment, 
You can choose what skills you want to learn and swap equipment between characters to get everyone built how you want. Passive abilities tied to yet another system of magic stones, which work a lot like Paper Mario's badge points. As characters level up normally, they'll also get more magic stones so they can equip more support abilities at once. Plus, with so many skill bars overlapping, you'll level something up in almost every other battle. The system gives tons of agency to customize your characters exactly how you want, gives even low quality pieces of equipment a purpose, and creates a very smooth ramp, dotted with lots of new abilities. The grind feels less grindy when you're getting something tangible all the time. Lost Odyssey is not too different. Abilities can be used and learned permanently through your equipment, just like in FF9, but on top of that, there's the skill link system. Lost Odyssey divides its characters into two groups, mortals and immortals. Mortal characters learn new abilities through a leveling system, but can't learn equipment abilities permanently. The immortal characters are the opposite, learning skills not by leveling up, but through either their equipment or by linking to a mortal character to learn their skills individually. It's an interesting way to customize, and lets multiple characters share new skills. It even adds another layer to picking your party compositions, and gets you to use everyone in your team in order to power up your characters evenly. Seriously, check Lost Odyssey out. It's a real hidden gem that doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Okay, so basic level up systems can help progression, but they can become very predictable and disengaging. So how do you fix that? You could give players more agency in how they build their character for one, and you could do that through point allocation systems. Instead of just increasing stats randomly or based on a predetermined path, let the player allocate increases as they see fit. Castle Crashers is a side-scrolling beat-em-up with some light RPG elements. As you level up, you gain new combat options and also get to allocate some points to physical strength, magic, defense, and speed. No big twist here, just a level up system where the player picks the stats that are most important to them. It gives them a long-term goal, and even adds some replayability if you want to try out different builds. This system takes what would otherwise be kind of a boring treadmill into one with a little more strategy baked in, and one that can veer characters towards a particular playstyle. You can find deeper point allocation systems in games with skill trees and perks. Remember how the more interesting parts of Pokemon were the new moves and evolutions dotting the path from level 1 to 100? What if we made a system focused on that, but for every level? Instead of basing most of the progression on numerical stats, skill trees hand out new abilities for each step on the progression ladder. Or, yeah, sometimes do stat buffs, but you get the pick this time. For action games like Spider-Man and God of War 4, the system creates a steady flow of new combat abilities that accomplishes a few things. It periodically adds something new for players to play around with, which keeps adjusting the game's combat options, which prevents one strategy from dominating from start to finish. It also helps take what would be a dizzying array of moves and parcels them out slowly, so players don't get overwhelmed by having to learn everything at once. For developers, this also helps prevent a case where you spent a lot of effort to create the animation and mechanical behaviors on a move that gets forgotten about in a flood of other moves. The slow, steady progression of reveals helps give each move its time in the spotlight, right after you unlock it, so each move can be tested out in turn. Spider-Man uses a traditional XP leveling system to gain points to spend on its skill tree, but also combines it with other progression systems to hide the grind. The system also makes new cosmetic costumes available for purchase. Story progression provides new gadgets. There are six different token types to gather from side missions that let you upgrade gadgets, costumes, moves, and more, which gives a good reward for players that engage with all the different activities in the game world. But six different kinds of tokens, plus an XP system, plus story progress is just a lot of things to track. It'll start to get unwieldy. Devil May Cry simplifies that down to just one currency. Currency. Devil May Cry doesn't have what at first glance looks like a skill tree, but the progression lies in how you spend your money to buy new moves. The money is still metered out slowly, just like an experience system. The way you purchase the moves still gives each one some time in the spotlight, like the systems in Spider-Man and God of War. The progression is more open than a traditional skill tree. A big downside to these trees in action games is they can make things weird for repeat playthroughs. 
The loss of most of your cool moves makes the built up muscle memory from your last playthrough kind of useless. But that's where a new game plus mode can come in. Oh hey, look at that. Devil May Cry made a good one of those too. Wonder why. The Souls games also combine experience and currency into one thing. Buying equipment and spells from shops is all done through Souls. It's not that unique, but the way they're built into the world is. When you die, your accumulated souls are left at the spot you died in. To get them back, you have to run back to your body. If you die trying, all the souls and all that progress is gone for good. Because souls are the main driving force behind character progression, the possibility of losing them permanently adds a lot of risk and reward to the game's leveling system. The one chance to save it aspect helps keep the system from feeling more punishing than it had to be. Building up experience and later cashing it out is an idea that Final Fantasy XV has tried with mixed results. As you battle, the experience that you earn isn't actually put into your characters right away. It only applies when you rest at either a campsite or at a hotel. Staying at a campsite will also let you cook stat boosting meals and sometimes trigger rare optional story sequences that add some light content and character development. Problem is, there's a dominant strategy problem in the system. Not all rest stops are the same. Better hotels give you XP multiplier bonuses, which makes traveling a ways to stay at this hotel the objectively best option to level your characters. The system actually makes it less likely that a player will stay at campsites, which causes them to miss those pieces of side content unless they're already aware of them. Be careful when adding in bonus systems. Many players can and will optimize the fun out of a game if that makes the numbers go up faster. So that's some basics on how to polish a level up system. Let us know in the comments some of the ones we didn't mention. There are a lot of good, fun, weird systems out there. We might make a follow up video about some of them. Level up systems operate with extrinsic progression to inject novelty into a game. At their most basic, they can be a grind, but if you dot the level up system with a lot of new features, make your players feel like they have tons of options, and show them tangible benefits for the time they've put into your game, you can make your level up system a mountain worth climbing.